no, a la Iglesia Católica y a los protestantes y se mencionan las raíces cristianas de Europa de la Constitución cosa que por el momento de no I want to ask one question now. We will be talking about, let's say, about religion, mainly as an uh, ideological concept that is connected with the society, with politics, and so on. And if I maybe I can pose this question by first telling a simple so story that is quite known, and I read it in some books. And it's like uh, there were uh, in history there were living some tribes in some locations. Then one guy came and he taught them how to. Uh, make fire, you know? and uh, then uh, the first tribe was very happy and successful and they learned how to make fire and so he went to the other tribe and he teach them and there were uh, some priests there and uh, they felt uh, endangered by this man who was uh, teaching them how to make fire because they would get independent, they would praise him, so they killed this man and uh, to satisfy the people, they took his tools and made an altar and they said to all people, this was holy man, but he died and here are his relics and now you have to respect this and we are uh, your, I don't know, um, your media with God. So I actually wanted to ask, where in religion is actually now God? Is religion just using God for posting ideas, uh, for influencing people, or is there still God in religion. Where, where exactly is this place for God? Is it like personally conceived or, I mean, because religion actually comes, the, the bottom line idea is it the God. Dios está presente en todo sistema religioso. Um, God is present in any religious system. Que promueve that promotes la dignidad de la persona humana. The dignity of the human being. Si la estructura religiosa, la iglesia, if the religious structure, if the church, for example, o la actividad religiosa, or the um, ag religious activities, no produce fenómenos de solidaridad, um, don't produce um, acts of solidarity, ahí Dios no está presente. Then God is not present. Está presente en el mundo inmanentemente, porque Dios ha creado el mundo. He's always present in that sense, but he's not present in the, in the acts of what's happening. Pero lo que hacemos no tiene su bendición. But if, we're, if we act in this way, which is not promoting solidarity and human rights, we're acting without the blessing of God. So Hay un discurso muy, muy, muy antiguo, de no es de ahora, es de, es de, es de siglos. There is a discussion which has been going on for centuries. Y ha comenzado con Lutero y con uh, Leibniz y con, con, con tantos uh, 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 filósofos. Which began Kant, with Luther, Leibniz and many other philosophers. Acerca de la necesidad. About the necessity o no de tener un sistema religioso or not to have a religious system para establecer un contacto con Dios in order to establish contact with God. por el momento For now, Claudia y yo the both of us, <laughs> no necesitamos pertenecer a una comunidad religiosa we don't actually belong to any official church pero absolutamente nuestras vidas but our lives están conscientes Are we live consciously de que no somos nada that we're nothing sin la asistencia de Dios. Without the existence of God. Nosotros oramos juntos. We pray together. Leemos la Biblia. We read the Bible. Nos dedicamos a textos espirituales. We read religious te spiritual texts. De vez en cuando atendemos algunos servicios religiosos de iglesias de amigos. We also visit different churches, different services for that our friends go to. Pero después de mi experiencia de miembro de la Iglesia Católica, Church, no me es necesario, it's not for me, for me, at the moment, al momento, pertenecer a un grupo religioso organizado. To to any kind of group. Uh, y ahora Claudia les va a comentar, les va, les va a contar una historia de cómo. Uh, 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 no es necesaria la religión 
pero sí hombres eh, eh, devotos, hombres con, eh, 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 con fe y hombres con espiritualidad pueden cambiar el transcurso de la historia. Hay una canción que se llama Amazing Grace. So there's a very popular, well-known song of worldwide Amazing Grace that's usually Amazing Grace, how sweet. Okay, and it's <laughs> it's usually um, associated. It's almost like a hymn of the black black Americans, and it's usually. Um, does anyone know the the story behind the song? Does anyone know who wrote the song? Okay. Um, <laughs> the song was actually not written by black American slaves, but by a man named John Newton, who was an Englishman and who was a slave trader. And he was very active. He had his own slave company. He had boats that went from England to Africa, picking up the slaves, taking them to America, selling them and bringing product back to Britain. So he was part of this whole slave triangle. And um, I can't give you the details of the whole story because I don't remember. <laughs> But he, he had an experience with God. He started studying about God, the Bible, what are the values, what, um, what does God expect of me. Um, and he completely, he, all of a sudden it's like some, um, how do you say, <laughs> a curtain opened. And it was the shock over what he had been doing all these years to other human beings that inspired him to write this song. And so, here knowing that and hearing black people sing the song makes it even more powerful. Because it's, and he, that, okay, that was the one thing. He didn't just write the song and stop there. <laughs> um, he actually got together with um, another British person who was a member of parliament. And at that time, He was a, one of the members who's there in life for, it's, they didn't have their four year terms, but they were in for life. I think it's the upper half of the House of Lords, or I don't remember. Anyway, and this man was William Wilberforce. And the two of them got another, found a few other individuals who started to see things the way they did and started to understand that it was absolutely morally before God completely wrong what was going on and what was happening to these other human beings. So the first step was recognizing these black people, these African people as human beings. So they were, um, they were way ahead of their times. <laughs> um, and they started a movement um, in the parliament to have slave, the slave trade abolished. Um, it was considered that this church was completely against them. It was a scandal because the whole economy in Britain depended on the slave trade. So what they were proposing would send the whole country into poverty. But they said, no, it's morally wrong before God what we are, what's happening here. We can't, we can't sacrifice these other human beings just so we can live, have happy, you know, um, for, live happy lives. They never stopped fighting for it. And it, over 40 years, they kept repeating this proposition, this proposal. They finally, they kept talking to people about it, bringing in more facts. And I think it was just a few days before William Wilberforce died that the British Parliament passed the bill to abolish slavery. And that started like a domino effect because the rest of the world, everyone else who was involved in the slave trade was absolutely shocked. Um, because if one country stands up and says, no, this is morally wrong, we stop, then you can't pretend, you can't fool yourself anymore. And um, if everyone is pretending it's okay, then everyone can do it, there's no problem. But if one stands up and says, no, this is wrong. And it took a couple of more centuries for it really to be abolished worldwide and even for the United States to get that far. But it's, it started off and it actually did change the course of history. So it's just a small example how not an institution, but individuals because of their faith and motivated by their faith were able to change something. 
As you know, in the Iran, Iraq, Arabic country, uh, you must uh, use the woman first to use its care. And in the other hand, in the same country like France or Turkey, women first to don't use it. Who, uh, the woman who uses care can't go to school with it, can't go to parliament. And it's uh, a big problem all over the world. I just want to learn. Uh, how it became, how, how a piece of clothes became a big problem like that, and also, uh, do you think uh, the scare is restricted women or make uh, her feel freer? Yo creo que es una hipocresía del mundo occidental. I think it's um, a hypocrisy of the Western world. Es prohibirle a las musulmanas que usen el hijab. Um, to forbid Muslim women to, to wear the hijab. ¿Por qué las monjas católicas pueden utilizar? Because why can Catholic nuns wear their habits? Nadie tiene problema con eso. And no one has a problem with that. Algunas tienen la cara tapada completamente. And even some um, ordens of nuns, they have the whole, you know, face almost. Hay distintos face. modelos de hijabs. Um, no. And there are different models of the scarf of hijab. Tu hijab permite ver un poquito de pelo. ¿eh? So, in your example, you can see a little bit of hair, your hairline. Pero hay monjas católicas. But there are Catholic nuns. Donde no se ve nada, donde va desde la ceja hasta la boca. Where from the eyebrows until the mouth, everything, you know, above and below is, is covered. Y ellas pueden ir a la escuela, si nadie tiene problemas. And nobody has a problem with the fact that they go to school that way. O sea, quiero decir, hay un prejuicio hacia ustedes. And what I'm saying is there is certain prejudice against Muslim women. Y en, where... en el fondo lo que hay es miedo. And what is behind this is, is fear. ¿Qué va a pasar si dejamos a las musulmanas que invadan todas las escuelas, las instituciones, los parlamentos, los hospitales? It's an irrational fear that says what will happen if we allow Muslim women to come into the schools, into the hospitals, into parliament, into public office. Usando el hijab. Wearing the hijab. Ok, si, es, si estamos hablando del hijab, he dicho, para mí es una hipocresía. So de... if we're only talking about the hijab, then to me it's hypocrisy. Not to, allow Not to allow you to use the hijab in the school in France. Uh, what about the other men's hijab? Es un problema. Es un problema para la policía. Es un problema cultural de comunicación. Sinceramente no pensé mucho en, ese, en esa situación. Um, I haven't thought about this topic too much. Pero en Turquía, But in Turkey, en Tunis, and Tunisia, eh, y en Bosnia, and in Bosnia, cuando he visto mujeres completamente tapadas, when I see women that are covered, mi reacción my es no positiva. Is not a one. No me siento con, eh, ¿Cómo? I don't feel comfortable. Si no veo la cara de la persona. I can't see the face of the person. Entiendo, yo entiendo la necesidad. I understand the necessity. Pero me parece que uh, no es necesario. But I don't think it's necessary. Y yo creo que es una desviación. And I do think it's a deviation. Cultural del Islam. Cultural deviation. En el origen del Islam no existe. Because in the original Islam it doesn't exist. Así como hay muchas cosas que los cristianos le han puesto a Jesús. Y no está en los orígenes del cristianismo. But they there in the original, the of Fueron inventados después. They were and added on la posición de la mujer en, 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 en la cultura uh, uh, greco-romana y en la cultura hebrea era una posición de sumisión. The position of the women in the Hebrew and Greco-Roman societies was a, was a lower one and one of submission. Inclusive en el siglo XII, Santo Tomás Even de Aquino, in the 12th century, Saint Thomas of Aquin, define a la mujer the woman como un error de la naturaleza. As a mistake of nature. <laughs> Hoy en día, and today, now and la mujer y la teología feminista, women and feminists, Theology, están tratando de 
are trying to poner a la mujer al mismo nivel del hombre. To put women on the same level as men. Y por supuesto, yo no puedo ser católico. And I can't be Catholic. Si yo creo If I believe que la mujer tiene derecho a ejercer el ministerio sacerdotal. Simplemente cuando mencioné esos términos, lo hice como periodista y como teólogo. I used them as a journalist and as a theologian. Les puse uh, 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 a, a, para que consideren ustedes lo que está sucediendo en el mundo de la política internacional en la teología. Um, to explain to you what is happening in terms of theology and politics in the world. No quiero, no, todo lo que yo dije no es solamente mi uh, pensamiento privado. No. So what I was saying isn't only my personal opinion. Es también lo que está sucediendo en el mundo, ¿no? It's talking about what is happening in the world. Pero evidentemente es claro But it's, it's clear, it's evident que hay personas como tú like you, que tienen, por ejemplo, conciencia de la importancia de los sindicatos y los derechos de los trabajadores are like y que, por ejemplo, and, for example, es más importante more important la solidaridad entre los trabajadores del Medio Oriente o de tu país con Latinoamérica que el problema religioso o el problema de la educación o de la justicia en el país. Pero tú tienes que aceptar el hecho But you have to accept the fact que existen prejuicios muy grandes entre las religiones. But that there are very big, um, and strong prejudices between religions. Y hay conflictos, hay conflictos que hay que resolver. And that there are conflicts that need to be solved. Si el Papa Benedicto uh, uh, por segunda vez en siete años repite. If the present Pope Benedict within five years, seven, seven years, re repeats for uh, second time que la Iglesia Católica es la única verdadera Iglesia de Cristo, the, the Christ, que las iglesias protestantes no pueden ser llamadas iglesias, churches, um, churches, 
que tal vez las iglesias ortodoxas tengan algunos elementos por los cuales pueden ser llamadas iglesias, pero no tienen todo lo que tiene la iglesia católica. Eso exige una respuesta de los teólogos. This requires a, a response from theologians. Y teólogos como yo le dicen al Papa, usted no tiene razón. And theologians like me, our answer to the Pope is, you're wrong. Y señor, usted cuando era joven era miembro de la Hitlerjugend. Um, Hitler y en aquella época Hitler decía que los alemanes eran la única nación verdadera. ¿Y qué, qué está haciendo usted ahora? And what is happening with you now? ¿Está reproduciendo aquello que quedó en su subconsciente? Are you Is he repeating now what en la educación que usted recibió como joven porque donde dice donde dice en la Biblia que alguien tiene el monopolio de la palabra de Dios es una oferta the word of God is an offer. si la quieres la aceptas si no la quieres no la aceptas Jesús dijo si quieres Jesus always said, If you want to, toma tu cruz y sígueme then take up your cross and follow me. pero él respetó la libertad de aquellos que no lo quisieron seguir y el concilio Vaticano II and the second, um, Vaticano II dijo que el Espíritu Santo está presente en todas las religiones ¿eso qué significa? que los musulmanes viviendo su fe en perfección alcanzan el mismo nivel de salvación que un cristiano Salvation as a Christian. Por supuesto, los musulmanes And of course, the, the Muslims, no aceptan esa teoría. They don't accept this estoy hablando theory. de los musulmanes en general. I'm talking in general. No estoy hablando del profesor Said. I'm not talking about people like Professor Said. Uh, uh, y, 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 y ese tipo de problemas And this type of problem, tienen que ser solucionados a través de instituciones que fomenten el diálogo. De, de científicos, de profesores, de antropólogos, películas, 